What is going on, people? It is your boy, Daddy Mac, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield Team Builder. I already had our first Wi-Fi battle with this team. Uh, I have to record the Team Builder right now, though, because the video... Uh, I, I had my mic muted, so I had to redo the Team Builder. But we have a team built around Gigantamax and Tally on this time around. So we did Rillaboom. We did Cinderace. And now we're doing Inteleon. So Grass, Fire, Water which is the general Pokedex order just for fun. And now we are on the water Galarian starter Inteleon here. So this Inteleon is going to be so fun to use. I already got to use it and I'm really excited to share this with you guys. So do me a favor and make sure you guys turn notifications on and subscribe because the Wi-Fi battle on Friday is not going to disappoint. I promise you. I 100% promise you if you're a new viewer, Please trust me on this. Please trust me on this. Because Inteleon is a Pokemon you do not want to mess with. Look at this. Watch. Check this out. Dance move right there. I, I don't know what that was. But anyways, we are using a team built around Gigantamax Inteleon. And as you can see, we're going to try. Or I'm not going to say try. We are going to take advantage of this thing's hidden ability, Sniper. So as you can see, the first item we have on this Pokemon is going to be the Scope Lens. The scope lens are a it's an item that boosts the critical hit ratio okay so keep that in mind take notes right here because falling used this intellion against me a different move set but he used this intellion against me and he made me cry oh he didn't really make me cry but i cried in here it, i every time i see an intellion i'm really scared that it'll be running focus energy and using the exact same set that falling used because that thing molly whopped my team i have no better way of putting it uh for pg pg 13 but he molly whopped us he, he molly whopped us so scope lens 252 special attack and 252 speed so we are a modest nature with sniper which powers up moves that they become critical hits when attacking so we're going to try to use this ability into effect as much as possible we got focus energy so a combination of the focus energy and the scope lens once you hit the first focus energy your pokemon is gonna hit nothing but critical attacks or critical hits critical hit critical hit critical crit, critical hit critical hit you guys get the point and with sniper those critical hits are gonna do a lot of damage you're gonna see you're probably gonna see a couple sweeps with this team to be honest with you and those sweeps are gonna be coming either from one of the pokemon i have in the back that you guys will see here in just a moment or Inteleon here so we got focus energy as our setup attack we got dark pulse for coverage we got shadow ball for coverage and we got snipe shot the set that falling used in particular did involve snipe shot it involved focus energy but i believe I, i'm not sure of what his third move was but i know for sure he had uh i think it was air air slash because he had the max air stream to boost his uh, his speed we're gonna try to defer from that a little bit because i really want a little bit of coverage in this team so hopefully we can do something about that but we are running dark pulse shadow ball and snapshot which is our signature attack and what's really cool about snapshot is if my opponent has a seismitoad with water absorb in the back or a gastrodon with water absorb in the back given that they're grounded water types they're not gonna necessarily enjoy a snapshot because they can't take the water type attack they won't necessarily resist it but they're not necessarily super effective against it so snapshot it's probably going to knock out a lot of those Pokemon. A lot of Gastrodon if we come against one. And a lot of Seismitoad. And then uh, I already mentioned that this Pokemon is a modest nature. The next Pokemon we're using. And I actually missed the Shiny Amoongus event, unfortunately. Um, but we're using an Amoongus here. We got Black Sludge for re Residual Recovery. We have 252 HP and 252 Defense with a Bold Nature. We are running Regenerator because we want this thing to be a, as... Um, as healthy as possible of course and then for the move sets we're running spore because um if i if my opponent has something threatening and i want to try to make a prediction for him to switch into that pokemon and i get to put that pokemon to sleep so that's why i'm running spore i'm running toxic because i'm a little bit traumatized from last week's video um we saw a porygon 2 and uh that thing was extremely tough to take down we did manage to take it down but i'm running toxic for those really 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 pesky walls that we're gonna run into like porygon 2 
Um, what's another really tough wall to bring down that gets hit with Toxic? Um, I'm really drawing a blank right now, to be honest with you. But Toxic is there for Pokemon that are really tough to break down. Chain C is one of them. And Belissi is one of them also. We got Synthesis for Residual Recovery. Even though I don't feel like we're going to use it a whole lot because we're, re we're Regenerator. And we have Black Sludge for Recovery. And... Um, He's gonna stay healthy or she's gonna stay healthy as much as possible and we got clear smog because this this uh move is really nice when a pokemon is at a plus two an attack or plus two special attack or whatever the case may be it's really nice on neutralizing any stat changes that my opponent has so we are a bold nature in terms of this amoongus another pokemon that we have here and this is one of my favorite pokemon ever this is honestly my favorite regional bird out of all the regional birds. I think it's actually a tie between Staraptor and Talonflame. They both bring something unique to the table, but they're both really good. And I, I actually run them similarly in terms of item. But we're running a choice band here with this uh, Talonflame. A lot of people would prefer to run heavy duty boots and um, a flying type attack that doesn't do recoil, unlike I am using right now. But... We're 252 attack and 252 speed with Gale Wings. And that we're an adamant nature. A little bit of a crash course, a history lesson for you guys who have not played competitive Pokemon in Generation 6 when uh, Talonflame was first introduced. Gale Wings was an ability that was always in effect. It wasn't necessarily only when Talonflame was at a full HP. He could be at half HP. He can be at 1 HP and Gale Wings would still come into effect. So... A lot of people thought that ability uh, was broken, and of course I understand why, but this thing is four times weak to Stealth Rock. And of course it has ability it has the ability to roost, which can keep this thing a long term. But a lot of people thought that Talonflame was one of the most broken Pokemon in all of OU. And rightfully so, like I said, because Gale Wings, this thing had the ability to bulk up roost and just bam brave bird as much as possible and sometimes it did get a little bit scary if you didn't know how to handle a talon flame um but ever since generation six it got nerfed in generation seven and of course it followed in generation eight so we are choice banded running u-turn for pivot we're running flare blitz which we probably won't be clicking a lot unless my opponent has a pokemon that's super effective or or weak against uh, flare blitz we got steel wing for coverage and we got Brave Bird, which is going to be the uh, attack that we're, be, that we're going to be spamming a lot. Um, it's, Talonflame with the Choice Band is going to do a lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage. And you guys are going to see that in these videos. And then we're running Adam and Nature, just like I said. It says I transferred it from the Alola region, but I have a feeling that this is my Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Um, actually... No, as you can see in the market, actually is an Alolan Talonflame. I have another one that's from Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire um, in the back. I thought I was bringing that one for some reason, but... The fourth Pokemon that we're going to be using here is going to be Crocodile. Crocodile is another one of my favorite Pokemon. He's actually one of my top five Generation 5 Pokemon, just because I love this thing i love what this thing has done to me or for me i love what this thing has done for me and as you can see i'm running choice scarf a lot of people like running choice bandit and um or choice band moxie crocodile or choice band intimidate crocodile i like to do the opposite i personally like running a choice scarf crocodile with a moxie boost so moxie of course is the ability that every time you knock out a pokemon you get a plus one in attack and as you can see, we're Adamant Nature with 252 attack and 250 speed. So we're dishing out as much damage as possible while still being a little bit fast. Now, this Crocodile, as compared to the one I've used before, is a little bit unique. Because I usually run Jolly Nature Crocodiles. And this time, we're going to try to dish out as much damage as possible with the attack while still being pretty fast. The moves that we have with this Pokemon are Stone Edge, Crunch. Um, which is going to be used a lot if my opponent does if my opponent actually does have a levitate user or a flying type pokemon close combat a brand new po uh, uh, i almost said pokemon a brand new move that was given to this pokemon in this generation so no longer do you have to give up this close combat 
for super power because of course close combat is a lot better if you are at a plus two moxie for example or whatever the case may be and you don't have to lower well you still lower your defense actually but you're not lowering your attack output anymore and that's actually really good for crocodile with close combat and earthquake is going to be our our next primary sab attack so we're going to be clicking this a lot if my opponent does not have a pokemon with levitate or flying so crunch when they do earthquake when they don't and this is the, the second pokemon that i was talking about that actually can get a sweep going in the right situation of course with the toy scarf and the moxie this thing is absolutely beautiful um the next pokemon the excuse me i need some water my throat is going a little bit it's hurting a little bit because i've been talking a lot but the next pokemon is going to be mr mime this thing is a toy specs mr uh mr mime instead of choice scarf and we are running technician which boosts uh moves uh with a power of under 60 i believe and we're running 252 speed 252 special special attack with the timid nature and i think this thing is actually bottle capped but it, it you can see it's calm but i used i also use a mint on it i just didn't want to uh, i actually yeah I, I did breathe this i did breathe it i just didn't breathe the nature of the thing running magical leaf which is going to be triggered by the uh, technician boost we got Dazzling Gleam, which is going to be a primary stab attack alongside Expanding Force. And we got Thunderbolt uh, for coverage. Expanding Force is a brand new move in this uh, in this generation introduced in the Isle of Armor that actually powers up on Psychic Terrain. I generally like to I, I really like to use um, Spy Shock because if a Pokemon is specially defensive, switch into me. Well, let me let me rephrase that. If a Pokemon that's specially defensive switches into me while I have Mr. Mime out in the in the field, I like using Side Shock to kind of catch it off guard. And I've actually used Side Shock a lot against a Chansey and a Blissey, and it just it catches the opponent off guard uh, because, of course, those two Pokemon and mostly Blissey is weak against uh, physical attacks. This time, however, I'm gonna change it up, and if we come uh, if we come across. A Pokemon that has uh, Psychic Terrain or Psychic Surge. Basically, if we have an opponent that uses Psychic Terrain, we're going to make him pay by using Expanding Force. The final Pokemon in this team is actually one of my favorites. I, I'm really excited to use this team because of Snorlax, and let me show you why. So we are Assault List. Of course, if you guys play Pokemon, you know that Snorlax is a special defensive monster. 110 base special defense. Uh, you know and you add a, an assault vest to that this thing becomes as bulky as it can be no probably not in my situation here because i'm not maxing out my special defensive evs but what i'm doing is i'm maxing out my hp and my attack evs and running thick fat that way i can take some fire type attacks and some ice type attacks um and here's why i'm excited to use this thing we got earthquake which is only there for coverage we got fire punch because of the fesky feral thorn running around in this generation you don't see them a whole lot ever since the isle of armor but they're still there um talent flame is weak to to stealth rock times four which ultimately cuts our hp in half so fire punch is a little bit of a backup with the snorlax here we're going to be clicking body slam a lot because it has a, a chance to paralyze my opponent but the move I am most excited about has to be the self-destruct 200 base power and this thing is adamant nature with max attack when Snorlax is ready to go down I'm just gonna click self-destruct and just take something for free and I am so excited to use that you guys have no idea how I'm how excited I am but there you have it that is our team Make sure you guys leave a like if you guys enjoy this team builder or if you guys just like this team in general or if it has potential. Just leave a like if you guys enjoyed this. Comment down below on your thoughts about this team. Any changes that you guys would make? I'm I'm I, I'm not I'm probably not gonna do those changes because I really like to experiment with the teams that I've built. But I'm curious as to seeing what you guys would do differently with this team, and I'm 100 percent open with that as to as if, if if it was a Pokemon change that you would do, a move change, ability change, item change. You know, I'm I'm really curious in knowing your guys' opinion and your guys' thought process on building a team. 
I personally like building teams with Pokemon that I have not used before. And ever since I started doing my Pokemon Sword and Shield Wi-Fi battles, I'm trying to bring in Pokemon that I have not used in previous teams. So that's basically why I, every single time I bring in a Pokemon Sword and Shield team builder, I try to switch it up and have Pokemon that not a lot of people are going to see, like in this case, Mr. Mime. Norlax is still seen quite a lot, but not as much as it used to. Uh, same thing with Talonflame because of the Gale Wings uh, nerf there. And Talion, occasionally see that Pokemon, but it's not necessarily straight up OU, like Rillaboom or Cinderace or whatever the case may be. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. Again, make sure you guys leave a like, comment down below, and last but not least, subscribe to my channel for more Pokemon Sword and Shield Wi-Fi battles and team builders. I will see you guys on Friday with a very special Wi-Fi battle that I'm so excited about. So stay tuned. I will see you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh,